Hey everyone, Neo once again from the Overclock magazine. Today, as you can tell, I'm looking at the Gigabyte Radeon RX 7900 XTX Gaming OC. It's been an entire year since AMD released the 7900 XTX and in that time, drivers have changed, pricing and so forth. As is, the 7900 XTX has never been better. So without further delay, let's just talk about the Gigabyte version and how it stacks up right now at the end of 2023. This is one of three 7900 XTX models from Gigabyte, the most premium one being the Aorus Elite, which is clocked substantially higher than this model. And then there's also the vanilla version, which is the same card as this one, but just clocked 25 megahertz less, if you would believe that. That said, the gaming OC should be more than capable of reaching the clock frequencies on the Elite card. The only difference is that you would be doing a manual OC instead of an automatic OC. And pricing wise, this card is currently selling for 27,000 Rand at Fortgenix and 999 US dollars on Amazon. Locally, this puts the gaming OC card in competition with the GeForce RTX 4070 Ti, whose review you can check out in the link below. That aside, I expected the gaming OC to feature three 8-pin power connectors and to be rather large. Fortunately, it only required two connectors and the card is relatively slim for a premium product at roughly five centimeters in height 33 centimeters in length and about 13 centimeters in width. So naturally, this should fit in a lot more cases than the Elite model or other brands which have larger cards. The gaming OC features, as you would think, a dual BIOS option. So we have one BIOS for quiet operation or quiet mode and another one for performance mode. I tested the card in quiet operation. Reason being the performance BIOS didn't add any useful performance to the card, to be honest. And all it did is just increase the noise substantially. Visually, the card looks similar to many gaming cards from Gigabyte of late. The design is relatively basic and save for the lighting on the Gigabyte label, there's not much to look at, I'll be honest. Do not get me wrong, this card still looks great in any system, but in as far as style and flair goes, yeah, it'll not be turning any heads, certainly not yours. Without further delay though, let's get to the performance, which is why you ultimately buy a graphics card. First up, we have 3 d Mark ray tracing tests in Speedway and Port Royal. In both tests, the XTX beats the 4070 Ti, but the margin of victory is diminished in the more advanced speedway test. Regardless, according to 3D Mark, the 7900 XTX is superior in raw ray tracing performance. In 3D Mark Time Spy, we pretty much see the same thing, but the margin is greater. In pure rasterizing performance, the Gigabyte 7900 XTX is up to 27% faster than the 4070 Ti. So with that out the way, the first game we test is, of course, Cyberpunk 2077 with the latest update. This game features all the bells and whistles when it comes to image reconstruction, ray tracing, pass tracing, and all that good stuff. The results are without any kind of upscaling, of course. And here we see that the 7900 XTX loses out to the 4070 Ti. The performance is still great at about 87 frames per second at Full HD and just under 60 FPS at QHD. However, it can't be denied that the 4070 Ti gives an overall smoother experience at these settings, especially when considering the 1% lows. For the Horizon is a title that's generally been friendly to AMD RDNA 3 hardware. And as we can see, the 7900 XTX is delivering a scorching 215 frames per second at the extreme preset with no upscaling. If we switch to 4K, we see that the XTX is still delivering over 140 frames per second, which is just under what the RTX 4070 is delivering at 1080p. Impressive showing by the 7900 XTX. Next up is Hitman World of Assassination. Here, the RTX 4070 Ti takes the lead again, most certainly because of the use of RT with no image scaling. The performance advantage of the 4070 Ti is relatively small at just 6 frames per second at 1080p and 11 frames per second at 1440p. Switching to 4K brings the cards even closer, but the 4070 Ti maintains its lead. And next up, we have Metro Exodus, the enhanced edition. As one of the first RT titles we had, it's getting a bit long in the tooth, but remains a challenging title nonetheless when no image upscaling is used. Here we see the Radeon 7900 XTX go back to the top, offering over 100 frames per second at the highest preset and the most extreme RT effects available. At 1440p, the performance is still stellar at 81 frames per second, which is 12.3% faster than what the 4070 Ti is capable of delivering. And at 4K, the game is still too much for even high-end cars, and we can see that 
even the mighty XCX, while still ahead, is not able to get to the magical 60 FPS mark, instead is reduced to just 46 frames per second. And then the last game I tested is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This title is a walk in the park for most graphics card and the 7900 XTX proves just as much with over 200 frames per second at 1080p, well ahead of the 4070 Ti, but honestly at this point it's really academic. I mean even at 4K, the 7900 XTX is able to deliver over 100 frames per second and extend this lead over the 4070 Ti by 25%. Okay, so now I'm going to switch it up a little bit. We have Unigen Superposition, another synthetic test or benchmark, which actually should have been in the beginning. But anyway, this test is a reminder of just how rich and how capable the DX11 feature set is. A beautifully rendered benchmark, which again puts the 7900 XTX ahead of the RTX 4070 Ti by almost 26%. And if you recall, these are similar margins to what we saw with Assassin's Creed. Last, we have temperature and power consumption under gaming. Now keep in mind that I'm using quiet profile here, but even then, 69 degrees Celsius is pretty much respectable. Power under gaming, when frame rate isn't capped, is around 325 to about 327 watts. The 7900 XTX can draw significantly more power than this when overclocked, but as you will see in my overclocking, I am willing to increase performance but not necessarily willing to exceed the default TBP or total board power. You can do this by undervolting the GPU, creating some thermal headroom for higher clocks, but at the same time, you can keep the power limit the same or even dial it down so that you can essentially reduce power but still gain better performance, which ultimately means that you can actually save yourself a lot of power if you're on battery backup as many of us are now in SA given the electricity situation or challenges that we face. Overall, I'm rather impressed by the performance and the operation of AMD's flagship 7900 XTX GPU. There's probably better value for money to be had in the likes of the 7800 XT, but if you have the means and are after some high performance gaming at 4K with limited RT effects or none at all, this just may be the GPU for you. I mean, it looks the part, price isn't as low as other brands, but it's still within the realm of reason as many 4070 Ti cards actually sell for the same amount and there's one in particular that actually sells for more. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of the Gigabyte Radeon RX 7900 XTX below. Remember to share, like, and subscribe if you haven't of course. But until then, take care of yourselves and peace.